Okay. Don't see stupid again, mate. <laughs> okay. Uh, as I say on the captioned, uh, not feeling very inspired today. Oh, let's take these off. Not feeling particularly inspired today. Uh, I've got other things I've got to do around the house. Um, however, uh, in order to stay consistent with my undertaking to uh, stream three times a week, uh, here is today's stream. Now, uh, yesterday I got sort of tied up doing something I've been meaning to do for a long time. Uh, you'll notice that whenever I uh, connect into uh, a virtual machine, it, it's deeply frustrating because um, I haven't yet got round to um, streamlining the way my personal setup is done on these machines. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to have a, an easy way that on any machine that I log on to, um, I can sort of impose my own setup onto that machine. Uh, now, ideally, I want to do it in a way that is flexible. Um, and by that, I mean uh, I can use it on all the machines that I generally work on. Uh, now, that tends to be Debian, Linux, um, and uh, Mac, so Darwin, uh, of various flavors. Uh, the vast majority of the setup um, is fairly straightforward. It's just a question of making sure a few applications are installed and so on. Uh, now, th there's some pros and cons to doing this. Um, first of all, uh, installing a load of applications is, is fine as long as the machine is yours. Uh, if, however, as we're doing here, we're setting up servers and stuff, uh, I don't want to install junk on there, or, yes, personal stuff on there. Um, but what I do want to do is uh, I've got things like you know Vim and Tmux, uh, Vim in particular. Now, obviously with Vim, I have uh, plugins and my own uh, VimRC file to configure Vim the way I like to have it configured. So that sort of thing really needs to be automated. Um, I use other applications on the terminal like uh, Ranger to a lesser extent because uh, I tend to just move around the file system directly. But Ranger can be useful occasionally. There's a lot of stuff to go with Ranger as well. Um, that helps in some circumstances, but probably not when I'm working on servers. But certainly when I have my own developer VM uh, set up, which I do a lot of, um, I set a lot of developer VMs up just to play around with. Uh, and every time I curse and swear uh, that, you know, it's not, I, I haven't set up a straightforward way of transferring stuff. Now, yesterday, let me just move this across to this session. Um, uh, now, uh, is it is it move window or window move? I can never remember. Let's try the the sensible way. Uh, move window, and it's coming from my Mac, and uh, it's window one. There we go. Okay. So, uh, uh, yeah. So this is what I was working on. Um, now. It, it's it's fairly simple. It's structured a bit oddly, and I'll explain why in a second. Um, uh, I've I've called it notionally dot files, um, but what it is is uh, it's just this install script primarily. Mm. So the install script you can ignore install dot log. That's obviously the log that it outputs. Um, test is unsurprisingly a test. Uh, so we've got install and then uh, generally anything which isn't the primary script I will stick in a lib directory. Um, so if I list the lib directory, uh, you'll see that uh, there's a library uh, and out of habit I tend to do scripts that I'm not going to execute as if they were commands. I stick the .sh on the end and uh, so you notice that the the install doesn't have .sh on the end. Uh, there's no indication that it's a script. And I do that because I'm going to execute that like a command. Um, so I don't stick .sh on the end. But .sh tells me 
this thing is not intended to be run directly it's actually a library okay now the other the other thing in lib is this standard okay and there are two things in there that i use quite commonly uh, colors and message now the reason i put them in there is because finally i want to get around to putting them into their own git repository so i've got my sort of standard bash library of commonly used utilities and certainly outputting messages and coloring things on terminals is certainly one of those things um so yeah so i'm i'm, I'm finally getting around to sorting that out so i'll have my standard stuff that will be mapped into um into the main git uh which will be uh, this route uh, so it will be uh, this install and then everything under lib uh, and this will be another git repository that will be mapped into it uh, we'll talk about that uh, momentarily uh, now everything under data will be yet another git repository because obviously data will vary uh, from person to person so the idea is i'll be able to release this install script uh, and this and this library uh, as is uh, and people can then reuse it and all they need to do is provide their own data now the data is divided up into uh, three sections uh, i've called it home it, th that's arbitrary it doesn't need to be called home but you do need a script with two subdirectories, one called check and one called install. And this is a really, really simplistic way of just checking that uh, an application or a utility is installed and then installing it if necessary. I'll show those in a second. I'm not, uh, you know, I don't want to go down the road of using anything complicated like Salt or Ansible or Chef or anything, or Puppet or anything like that. That's massive overkill for what this thing is designed to do. This thing is designed to be really simple. Okay. And tying it all together is this map CSV. Uh, so if I just look at that for a second. Uh, so this CSV is simplicity itself. Okay. So first of all, uh, the first item is the thing that is going to become a link so uh, and it will be under my home directory uh, and the reason why it's called home okay uh, so uh, it's designed really to manage the dot files under home so you can see here my newsboat urls uh, are going to be mapped to uh, this directory here uh, which is the newsboat urls under home now you can't see it at the moment because I didn't minus A. Okay, but under home uh, we've got uh, dot news boat and then the URLs for. Okay, so all it's going to do is create a link if it needs to, uh, pointing to this file, uh, and it will be mapped to this. Okay. Now these these next two, one tells it which check script to, to run. If that check script returns true or any success code, well zero basically, uh, then uh, then it's assumed that newsboat is installed. Okay. Uh, if however it doesn't return um, a success, then newsboat install script will be run. And these scripts are the ones that you see. Uh, under check and install okay so the check script is that one and the install script is that one now technically i didn't really need to separate those out but as you'll see if i if i just uh, uh if i just look at the check script for newsboat you'll see it's very very simple okay it's just a function called check newsboat and all it does is see whether or not there is a command newsboat and it just assumes that that is newsboat okay and 99 times out of 100 that's sufficient for what i want to do uh, similarly the install script okay uh, the install script it just invokes this package install function okay uh, and whoops and uh, gets a typo uh, so it wouldn't work um, I'm, I'm actually running testing this on a machine that's already got all this stuff installed but it's the reason for not picking this up uh, 
Now, what's that package install all about? Well, uh, that uh, is uh, uh, if I do um, my uh, lib load, okay, what you'll see in here uh, is uh, right, okay, so uh, all, all the uh, loading of the scripts does, okay, is it just iterates over those two directories, check and install, right? Um, so it just loads the scripts that are in check and loads the scripts that are installed. So this is what I mean by you don't really need both sets because you could put the check and install functions both in check and it would be loaded just fine. So it, uh, I suppose it makes sense to keep them separate, but it's not really necessary. I could have just put them all under one script directory and just add the two functions as being the key things. And, and I may change this because it's a bit, it's a bit of an overhead. Uh, however, uh, that's not really what we were looking for. The other thing it does is, you can see at the top here, it does this rather uh, complicated jiggery pokery for all of them to load in the various uh, library functions. Uh, in this case, it's just loading in the messages. Uh, however, that wasn't what I wanted to look at. Um, uh, uh, I'm trying to remember where the hell I define that package install now. Um, uh, where did I put that package install? Uh, it would appear I haven't put it anywhere. <laughs> uh, right, so <laughs> what package install is intended to do, uh, I'm a bit mystified, I must have removed it during one of my cleanups. Oh, well, we can, we can write it now. Uh, so no harm, no foul. Um, uh, but yes, uh, okay, so I'll, I'll write that in a second. Uh, in, in fact, um, yeah, we'll write that in a second. So, uh, what install does, uh, let's just have a quick look at install. Right, so what install does, again, it's by no means an elegant script. So, I'll uh, just go down to the end. So, you can see here, uh, it's just a load of functions. So, it sets the script globals, loads the library functions, which is primarily uh, things like uh, message. Processes the command line options and then installs the dot files. Okay, so if we go back to the top, setting the script globals, there's a whole load of stuff here about working out where the script is. Uh, so you've got the baseline directory, uh, working out where the data file is, uh, making sure we've got a map CSV file, because that's the key to the whole thing, really. Um, then uh, we create backups as we go along. There are various options about whether or not you force link replacement. So, for example, if I run this on a on a machine where I've changed, for example, uh, where the data file is or something like that, it can overwrite those links because uh, normally, if it sees something as a symbolic link already, it just says is a symbolic link already. I'll, I'll just leave it alone. Uh, but with uh, there's a minus f flag on the script. And that forces it. It says, I don't care whether it is already a link. I want you to reimpose the new link. Uh, right, suppressing checks and suppressing installs. Uh, you can say, uh, don't do any checks uh, for installed utilities. Uh, uh, now, this is obviously useful if uh, you... Uh, um, uh, if you... If you if you say don't do any checks, then it will assume that everything is already installed. So obviously, if you're running this on a machine where you don't have super user privileges and can't install packages, uh, or where you just don't want to disturb the packages for some reason, you do minus capital C, and that will suppress the checks. Uh, installs is similar. So you can perform the checks and get messages out to say, uh, this thing is missing, I need to install it. 
but then you can do a minus capital I uh, and that will turn the installs off. So although you'll be told this utility is not available, uh, it, it won't actually perform the install. Dry run, basically dry run uh, does um, the, the minus I, so it prevents installs and doesn't actually change any links or anything. It just tells you what it would do in the event. So if it sees you know, that you don't have a link already in your home directory or you already have a link and it's going to change or something like that, you, you'll just get a message telling you. Uh, debug uh, is obviously the debug flag. Uh, similarly, quiet and noisy, just set the level of quiet and noisiness. Well, quiet is either on or off, so uh, if quiet is zero, then it just you should get the standard messages out. If it's one, then it suppresses any messages apart from errors and fatal errors, or debug messages if you turn debug on. Uh, if you turn, turn noisy on, which is basically verbose, so uh, if you turn noisy on, then it just ups the level of talkiness of the script just a little bit. Uh, right, this prefix is all about whether or not you're running it in dry run. Uh, loading the library functions, as I said, really, it's just about loading those library functions that we've already seen. Uh, this backup is actually called as part of when it imposes a link. Uh, and all it does is it just creates a, a backup directory and copies into that backup directory anything it finds already. So you, you don't overwrite your uh, ex yeah, existing configuration on the machine. Uh, I mean, you do overwrite it, but you've always got the copy and backup to get back to in case you screw up. Uh, you can't turn that on or off. That's just, it always does that. Uh, this is the logic which does the actual linking. Uh, uh, usual usage stuff with all your flags. All right, command line options. Uh, again, it just basically just sets a load of uh, flag variables. And then this is the meat and potatoes function, install.files. Uh, so all this does is loop through map and then takes the uh, CSS, breaks it up, and uh, for each uh, each time, what it does is it looks to see whether or not there is a, a check function. If there isn't a check function defined, then it just adopts this default of check underscore, uh, which is defined in the uh, load library. Uh, and check underscore just returns true, basically. Uh, so, what you do then is you run the check function uh, and assuming you haven't done anything else, uh, you know, anything odd, um, then you uh, you actually run the install. Uh, and so uh, if, yeah, if the check is not true, <laughs> then you run, uh, uh, you run the install. Uh, uh, of the function. So that just deals with installing any missing applications. Uh, this part of the script is the bit that does the funky link replacement. Uh, so again, uh, you know, it, it really, all it really does is um, check the links and see whether or not they need to be changed. And if it does, then it runs that link function uh, up here to actually manipulate the link. Uh, so like I say, it's, it's a very simple little script. Uh, and that's it really. Most of the complexity comes from uh, all, all the flags and stopping it from overwriting and doing backups and stuff like that. Okay, uh, so let's run that package. Let's write that package in store. I'm really pissed that that's gone somewhere. Um, now, uh, I've evidently uh, removed it from somewhere. So what we need to do is, uh, I guess in here is as good a place as any because we've got this default check, uh, which always always says yes, the thing is installed. Um, so 
Yeah, so we can put the package install in here. Uh, so package install. Now, this doesn't need to be especially complicated, but what it's going to get is it's going to get a list of packages. Um, uh, so we can say uh, uh, packages equals uh, all of them. Uh, I think that's right. Uh, all right. What's he complaining about? Oh, nothing. Uh, yeah, unused. Oh, it stands to ring. Oops. Uh, okay, so uh, now, quite naively, if we were working on just on um, Debian, uh, then we would just do the apt install, uh, or apt get install. Um, but because we also want to work on DOM, we're going to have to put a, a case statement in, and we will base that on the results of you name to get the operating system okay and we're going to do darwin as the name for our um, and we're going to do uh, everything else we're going to assume oops, uh, everything else we're going to assume is a suitable Unix, uh, and then we're going to do ESAC to end it. Okay, now Darwin, um, generally speaking, uh, we're just going to use uh, brew if it's installed. If it isn't installed, then we're probably up the proverbial creek because most of the packages I'm going to install are Linux packages. Uh, and so brew is the best way of doing it. I am aware there are other uh, installers, um, but we can add those as and when. Uh, for the time being, let's just check to see if brew is installed. So if uh, uh, command uh, is a brew. Now we're not interested in the actual output. Uh, assuming it is, uh, then we're good to go. Uh, if it isn't, then we want to do, uh, let's do, let's make it fatal. Uh, uh, install available. No, no brew installation. Available. Okay. Now I'm making this fatal this time, but obviously, if if we if we get to the point where, uh, for example, you want to use Mac ports or something like that, um, then you would need to check brew. You need to check Mac ports. You need to uh, check, uh, you know, whatever else you wanted to use. Uh, so it's just a series of elifs at this point um, because. They're just slightly different. Uh, okay, we're done with the if statement. So, if we do have brew, uh, then all we want to do is we want to assume that the packages are cool. Mm. So we do package install uh, packages. Now it's gonna it's gonna whine uh, because it's gonna say. Uh, to prevent globbing, but well, we actually do want it to do word splitting. Uh, so let's uh, let's put in a shell check disable SC ten ninety one. Okay. Uh, oh, no, it's a two oh eight six ten ninety something else. Um, Uh, okay. Uh, what's this warning about? 
Oh. Is that right? I, I have to check uh, whether that's right or not. Um, I mean, we could do them one at a time or something, but what's the point? Okay, so, uh, yeah, so we, we just assume that that's the case. Uh, so the return from that brew would be, or the, from that uh, install, would then be success or failure based on all of the packages being installed or not. Um, for here, uh, then, there are, we need to set the... Um, uh, uh, we, we need to run this privileged, uh, and we need to set uh, Debian... In, is it install uh, equals non interactive? Stop it pestering us. And then it's apt get and say yes to everything. Install uh, dollar packages. And this is going to wind in the same way. So let's uh, put that in there. Okay, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm treating this very simplistically because uh, I'm only really interested in Debian, but you, you would have to differentiate uh, different installers, uh, again, either by checking whether that particular installer was available. Uh, we might uh, end up having to put a config in to say which is the preferred uh, package management tool. Uh, for a particular operating system, uh, there are all sorts of variations. But again, the object of the exercise here is just to give me something really simple. Uh, so uh, I think that'll do. Um, arguably, uh, we should run two commands. So you should, should do an apt get uh, update, uh, then do the install, uh, I suppose. Uh, if I was being really cool. Having said that, if I was going to do that, then it wouldn't go into package install, it would go on uh, somewhere else in the script, or uh, it would be controlled by a flag. So if the update's already been done available, don't run it again. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with it as it is. All right. If you need to do an update, do an update. Okay. So that's, uh, as I say, it's not it's not complicated. Uh, it, there's a lot of things that can go wrong with it, but the output now, if you do dot install, uh, let's do a dry run. So minus n. So you can see here, uh, it's already set everything up. Uh, we can make it more talky. Uh, okay, so that tells us. All of these utilities are already present, but that's to be expected. This is my Mac, set up pretty much the way I like it. Uh, having said that, I might add a few things. Uh, again, we could do uh, minus C to suppress checks. Okay, so now you can see it doesn't output uh, that the thing was already installed. But if I do I, uh, that does tell me but it will make no attempt to actually do the install. Uh, uh, I can do minus Q, which basically tells it to shut up. Uh, okay, tells me it's dry run, but then if I didn't have the N on there, uh, it would tell me, uh, uh, as it happens, it, will, it won't do anything at the moment, because of course everything's installed. Uh, uh, minus Q, oops. Uh, Q. So you can see it's it, it's a bit shonky, but it, it does the job. Uh, uh, so to to the, the final few things to be done, uh, obviously, are to put things into repositories. Now, one thing you will notice here is all of this stuff, all of these .config files. Uh, I notice my mod setup isn't in there. Okay, now uh, none of these things uh, have got any secrets in them. Uh, oh, it's worth showing you uh, if I go to uh, 
uh, data uh, scripts install uh, now was it ranger uh, okay so this shows you uh, the need to do more packages uh, so you can see there's a slight difference between Darwin. Darwin, we still install the whole popular package. Here we're only installing the utils elements. Uh, there is no equivalent of this, but there are equivalents for all of these things. Okay, so uh, that's just a shows you doing that sort of thing, uh, and. Uh, what was the other one that was a bit funky? Uh, was it, uh, what was the other install that was a bit sexy? Uh, I need to add a whole load of stuff into... Oh, it was git prompt. So here, you see this one's a little bit more complicated. Uh, you install it differently. Uh, so, for example, uh, under Darwin, if brew is available, then we will install it using brew. Uh, otherwise, we use git clone, which is the way we'd also install it on, uh, on a and other. Okay, and so git clone is up here, uh, and it literally just says, right, uh, if the git command is available, then perform this git clone. Otherwise, uh, we balk because we've we've run out of options at that point. All right. Um, now, this git prompt present uh, is really the the check. Uh, uh, so th this is the way we do the check. Uh, but uh, uh, sorry, no, I'm telling a lie. We need to check by actually checking the file exists. What this is saying is, is the git prompt entry in uh, the bash file? because this bash rc git prompt is what's going to patch up our bash rc. So if the git prompt sh is mentioned in the profile, uh, they recommend bash underscore profile, uh, but I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but if it's in profile, then, uh, sorry, then we should not do anything. If it isn't, then we're going to just add to the end of it uh, a set of instructions. Uh, uh, it's fairly straightforward, really. Yeah. Uh, the first thing, and again, this is because it's generalised. We could, we could, we could actually put two different f fixes in uh, according to the operating system. But I've decided to do it all in one go. It was just simpler I guess. Um, so if the command uh, brew is installed then the toolpath is derived from looking at the brew prefix and figuring out where brew installed it. Okay otherwise it's in your home directory uh, and then this is just standardized. Uh, yeah. So it's just invoking git prompt uh, and if you're wondering uh, git prompt is this thing down here. Uh, uh, now, uh, yes, uh, looking at the various uh, files, <sighs> right, if you look in your home directory, you will see uh, things like um, there's a bash rc script if, you, if you're a bash script uh, shell user, which I think is sort of de facto standard unless you're a fish user or something like that. Um, And there are there are glorious online wars about which shell you should be using, um, which uh, generally speaking very tedious. Who cares? Which I mean, you know, people go, oh, "Bash is bloated, man. It's really slow." I don't care. It does the job, and it's sufficiently universal that I can log onto almost any machine and I'll have Bash on it. Uh, yes, there are exceptions, uh, and yes, you do have to learn other shell scripts and yes there are some really cool features in some of the shell scripts um, but on the whole 
not enough for me to it, it's a bit like this right when you buy uh, uh if you buy mac equipment long enough eventually you become sort of inured or apple equipment you become inured in their ecosystem and breaking out becomes quite a costly effort uh, not only financially but also in terms of you know all the utilities you, you're used to using all the tools you're used to using or yeah everything you're used to becomes a uh yeah a, a barrier to exit of course that's the whole point uh, the same goes for you know if you use bash sure uh, there are better things in certain ways uh, uh, for certain things um and people will wank on about them endlessly um but the truth of the matter is for 99.99 percent of the stuff don't care uh, uh they're fun to play with uh the problem is as soon as you as soon as you move away from a sort of de facto standard um you start creating problems for yourself in terms of oh you know this yeah this operating system or this installation doesn't have you know, z shell or doesn't have c shell uh, you know or something like that uh and you start to get a lot of problems uh bash yeah you're pretty certain there's a bash shell uh, on an installation there are exceptions uh alpine uh, the alpine it, it's stripped down to the bare bones and they've removed bash i guess because it's quite bloated uh, and they use uh the ash uh, shell uh, the alpine shell uh, which is just a really trimmed down tight little shell uh fine learn that um but uh, by and large don't care uh right what was i what was i before i found that rabbit oh yes yes yeah the point is that there are always going to be uh dot profile you will always find a dot profile uh you sometimes find a dot logger uh sometimes you, and you will almost certainly find an rc a resource uh file specific to your shell in bash's case it's bash rc now when those get run depends on uh whether you are accessing the machine interactively or not so for example if you if you interact with your account but you don't uh connect in uh, uh to a terminal uh then you won't necessarily run all of the scripts uh what uh for example you won't run dot logon because uh, sorry you will run dot logon but you won't necessarily run the bash script because uh the bash uh or is it bash profile one of them i can never remember doesn't get run unless you actually physically log into the machine here's the thing uh there's another file called bash underscore profile which is basically bash's version of profile and the problem is that if you've got a bash profile it doesn't run your dot profile so being the genius i am uh, what i do as a matter of habit um and i shall and i shall add this in to my installer okay the very first thing i do in my bash profile is i run profile on bash rc now there are times when you don't want to do that but uh the way i'm using the machines it's benign okay uh the the problem is if you don't do this little fudge uh you find for example there are things that will add things to your dot profile uh during their installation but they won't look for a bash profile for example if you haven't done this little fudge then they would never get invoked um uh, as long as you're logging into a bash shell uh, so it's worth just putting this little fudge in here to make sure that profile gets run uh, and i also run bash rc just as a precaution so this just makes sure that everything gets run irrespective of whether i'm actually logging into the machine uh, through a terminal or whether i'm uh, you know, running a remote job 
and not logging into a terminal, it, my environment is always set up the same way. Uh, so that's the reason for that little bit of magic. Um, and in actual fact, adding this stuff in uh, to the Bash profile is one of those things I need to add to install. Uh, uh, in order to standardize it. Uh, so you can see uh, this, I think, has been added automatically by Perl. I don't remember doing it. Uh, so it's probably been added automatically by Perl. Uh, this was probably added automatically when Poetry installed itself. So they are being added to the Bash profile. Uh, okay, uh, but if you look in profile, there's an awful lot of stuff in there as well. Uh, again, some of it has been added uh, by me, some of it has been added by other bits of software uh, automatically. Um, we've similarly got, uh, obviously, poetry has been added twice. Should really tidy some of this up, shouldn't I? It, it's all a bit sloppy. Uh, oh, you can see here that this uh, is doing what I did in my script, but that's repeated effectively down here, and with a typo. So I'm guessing I added that bit, but something else has inserted this. What a mess! Uh, uh, and Bash RC uh, does a load of other stuff, like for example making sure the SSH agent is running and uh, doing adding. I see that's important to be added uh, for me because it, uh, when I'm logged in because it's got loads of utilities in my bin directory, um, <laughs> not least of which uh, is fly, which is the control for my CI system. Uh, then you've got PyN. Uh, then what the hell was this? Oh, go to that's quite a useful little utility. Bash completion. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, a few aliases for various things. Uh, FZF, which I don't use as much as I should. Uh, that's FZ, FZF's pretty cool. Uh, uh, it's just a really it's a it's a better. Uh, recall because you can uh, you, know, you start typing and oh, anyway oops uh, I really want to make more use of FZF actually because it's got an awful lot of power behind it right anyway oh, sort of beside the point really um, anyway that's what I've been working on so hopefully uh, over the next day or so I'll get around to Doing all the git stuff i'm not going to do it now because i've got other jobs i need to go to do uh but we'll, we'll put it all into git uh make it all publicly available uh set up a virtual machine and do some testing make sure it works uh and then we'll talk about the secure side of things i guess but this is a bit of a tangent it's not really not really directly related to what we want to do. be doing on DevOps stuff. But it, like I said, it was just an irritant. So I needed to sort it. Right. Uh, I should be able to move this back, shouldn't I? Uh, let's try it. Uh, control V. Move window. Uh, no, I don't want to target it. Can I just target it without that? And it looks like I can. Can I put it back? Huh, cool. Right, loving teamworks. Okay, so let's just put that back where it belongs. And we'll call it a day. <laughs>